On that note, that last question, you've moved us nicely on because we've got performance psychologist Tom Bates in the studio with us now to continue the debate, currently working with West Brom, of course, and England at senior level are utilising a sports psychiatrist. Yeah, so Roy Hodgson has announced that he's going to take Steve Peters with him to the World Cup. What difference do you think that Roy is hoping Steve will make? I think when you get to that level, uh, the elite level, you know, when the players have been prepared physically, uh, technically, tactically, in the end, the outcome is defined by how well prepared the players are mentally and mindset becomes the defining factor in performance at the elite level. Without being harsh, he's dealing with, you know, a set of big characters and, and big egos, very, you know, world famous players on big budgets, people know them. Are they going to take to him? Will they listen to what he's saying? Yeah, I think they will. I think they will because uh, Steve has obviously been working with Brendan at Liverpool um, and had an impact there. And so the willingness of key members of, of the plane, of the players' staff, you know, will buy into the concept of uh, how the work can help. And that really makes a difference. When you have the big characters, um, the cultural leaders within the team buying into the impact of the psychology can have, it makes a difference and it'll make his job a lot easier. Clark, I know you've worked with sports psychologists in the past as well. Do you think the way in which Roy Hodgson makes this work? Does he do it as a unit with all the players together? Does he do it on a one-on-one -on -one individual basis? Do you think the way he wants to make this work is going to be crucial to its success? I think that's going to be key, the approach. You know, Like you said, I've worked with a few psychologists in a time. Uh, Keith Mintra, I know you're aware of, of him, Tom, who's the finest purveyor of it that I've come across. A fantastic guy. Um, but what I did find was in the dressing room, it's very much like a school playground or a classroom. And when you try and do something as a group, if there's a few who don't buy in, it can seriously undermine, you know, what the rest of the group take to it. So do you, do you think that, that Roy would be best utilising um, Steve Peters on a one-to-one -one or in a big group setting like that? Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's a great point. But it, I think it, the point relates back to the cultural leaders within the team. Yeah. Um, so once you get the players, uh, for example, Stephen Gerrard is obviously a key member of that England squad, senior figure, cultural leader. Mm. When you have these players buying into the work that the psychology can, can make a difference, the squad then follow. And Roy's job will be about transferring his mindset, his own mindset, tactically, technically, to the team in his absence. Right. And uh, so it can make a difference, definitely. Without wanting to sound like I'm not taking it seriously, because I do, I, I, <laughs> no, I do. My hobby is a sports psychologist a lot. But is it sort of more acceptable slash trendier now to say that you work with a psychologist? Victoria Pendleton very publicly said she had a, a you know, psychiatrist. And, <clears throat> and is it kind of more in vogue? Is it acceptable to have that kind of help? I think it is, but I think uh, with that, with our understanding of psychology and the work and the impact that it can have, has grown and expanded as well. We were speaking before about sometimes when the word psychology or psychiatry is used, it can, um, it can you, make people feel threatened. You must have so, had people say to you, oh, are you going to psychoanalyse me? Or, yeah. You must have had that reaction. Yeah, absolutely. That was one of my, you know, I was working at Birmingham and uh, I remember uh, a senior member of staff coming across and, and calling me the shrink. Um, and I like to say, you know, you're going to wave one of those things in front of my face and hypnotise me. Actually, it's not, it's not shrink. I don't use the word shrink. I use stretch. It's about stretching performance. And our understanding of psychology and the role that it can have in performance has expanded and evolved. And that makes a, that makes a difference. I'm already feeling mentally stronger. I can confirm. <laughs> does Steve Peters, though, does he have enough time to make a big difference, do you think? Because he's only just got the job. And, it, you know, the World Cup's not a long time to get to work with all those players as, as a unit. Yeah, I think it's a good question. But I also think that, um, you know, we're talking about elite athletes here. Elite athletes that at the very highest level uh, need that one, two, three, four percent to make a difference under pressure in the moment when it matters. And let's, uh, let's remember also that the players are able to absorb the information, to buy into that. And uh, if it's one percent difference, it's a hundred percent worth it. Can it make a difference in penalties? Because everyone just assumes, <laughs> I think, that now you've got a psychologist on board or a psychiatrist. And maybe it's penalties that he's there for. Is that the case or is it a much bigger picture than that? Yeah, I think it's a much bigger picture. I think the press liked the, the story about the penalty shootout, but I think it's a much bigger picture. And, and I think one of the things about performance anxiety is that, and I'm sure Steve will, will work with this with the players, is that there's no anxiety out there in the performance. There's no stress out there in performance. There are only players, teams, coaches thinking stressfully, thinking anxiously. And so it's about understanding how the thoughts that we have affect the emotions that we experience and those feelings define performance. So that's the difference that he can make and he can make that difference very quickly.
So one of the things that I found in the dressing room was there were a lot of lads who didn't like the fact that someone was coming from outside of football to teach them on how to play or be effective in football. Yeah. How do you get over that barrier, you know, that you're not linked with the game or you haven't played the game? I think empathy, and, and, and the number one is uh, not to talk about the technical jargon that is associated with psychology, not to alienate, but to speak the language of the culture, the language of the context, the language of the environment. And respect is earned. Uh, Steve has worked with some, some fantastic athletes uh, across different sports, and the players will be aware of that, Roy will be aware of that, and that automatically buys him a respect uh, yeah. immediately, and the players will have an empathy with him because of that, I think. Tom, thank you very much for coming in to talk to us. I think we all want a one-on-one -on -one session now, so you can just talk. <laughs> what should I do in my everyday life, Tom? Thank you very What's much. What's your hourly rate and how long have you got? <laughs>